Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. Uh, welcome all new listeners and welcome back to those who have heard my content in the past. If you want to know about the uncertainty of the PT profession and what you can control, you need to tune into this episode. Uh Uh, before I go on to the podcast, what is new? What is better in life? Um, I'm coming with hot, fresh energy coming from a conference uh, in Austin, and it was fantastic. I'm going to share everything with you inside this podcast. Uh, you'll definitely, um, you might be offended uh, or enjoy the content, one of the two. Um, uh, kids are doing great. Uh, you know, I, I, if you follow me on Instagram, I uh, I post on my kids and my family and um, just my, my daily life. And, um, you know, being away for a couple of days was fantastic, um, just to get clarity and, in, in what I want to be able to do, um, for the profession and for PTs like yourself. Um, but then there's the downside of being away from my family. So coming back, um, it's always, you know, I, I appreciate what I have. And, uh, this morning, my, uh, my daughter, I wanted to go in the sauna with me and, and she did a 50 degree cold plunge with me this morning. She did a contrast bath for about 50 minutes. Uh, 30 minutes and she's you know she's five years old and and it's just you know she wants to be around dad and and that's um the the little things in life and my son jacob wanted to make a shake with me this morning and a milkshake and and do all these other things so um it's good to be back home i uh, miss my family and uh miss you guys uh ready to get onto this podcast but um i'm i'm back on fitness my calf is bugging me just a little bit um but yeah no i'm i'm back on so um all right onto this podcast um as i mentioned some of you might get a little you might be a little maybe a little offended um maybe uh you don't want to hear this yet you're not ready to hear this yet you know but i'm so excited i love this profession and um, i love my job or i hate my job and i'm not sure what to do next and there's just going to be a lot of this um a little bit of um uh, discussion of what's going to happen with the profession. And um, the reason why I'm talking about this, I come back from uh, a great conference in Austin. I took a lot of good things away uh, for this podcast. And um, if you're uncertain about what um, your future holds in in the profession. Um, if you're sh not sure if this is a profession for you anymore, um, or if you're concerned of like, what do I do next? Um, what what I don't even know what's possible. Um, do I stay in my lane in in ortho sports and all other things? Um, if that's concerning, what do I do next? And so, if you're looking for a different route, if you're looking for like what's next, what's possible, um, what do I be, need to be aware of, um, and what opportunities lie ahead? That's the best question. Um, uh, this episode is going to be perfect for you because I am going to tell you um, the ins and the outs of what's going to happen inside the profession, what's going to hit us in the next two to three, five, 10, 15 years. And then where does that put you as a, as a clinician? Like what, what is your ultimate goal? And this will help you kind of better understand um, what you can do professionally instead of focusing on the small things that, you know, uh, instead of putting your head down, you're looking up uh, to look at what's ahead. And so um, that's what we're going to cover inside this podcast. So if that's for you, uh, continue listening. This is going to be phenomenal. All right. Um, the uncertainty of the PT profession. All right. So I, I just got back from um, from Austin and it was a private practice section and I'm, I'm a business owner myself. Um, I, for those of you new to the podcast, I have a um, multi-location cash-based uh, PT practice. Um, we have three locations, uh, 15 staff and um, absolutely love my team. I love what we do for the community. Um, I love uh, being able to um, create jobs, create culture, create opportunities for people. And um, and at the deep root of it, um, there, there's two people that I, I want to be able to help throughout this process. And number, number one is my staff, uh, my team, my deep rooted team. Um, you know, this is part of their career development. I'm part of their life story. I'm part of something bigger. And to me, that's a huge that that's a huge that gives me a lot of passion uh, to be able to help somebody. You know, wh whether you were sixteen to twenty two or ten to fifteen, you had people who helped you, and uh, professionally, um, I get joy from seeing people develop um, into whatever role they want to be able to do. So um, I enjoy helping my um, my internal team um, uh, get to that next level. Um, but I also enjoy helping um, patients in my community um, live bigger, better, stronger lives. And those two combined create a, a synergy that um, just just makes me happy, makes me want to do more for this planet. 
And then there's a third portion, which is you guys to be able to help the PTs in this profession, see bigger, better things to advance your career development. And um, going to this course uh, is in a unique perspective because it's a lot of business owners talking about great things that have coming up. Um, it talks about what's happening in legislation. Uh, it's talking about um, what is the next step in our career, in our profession, and what's going to happen. Um, what challenges do we face, and um, what are employers struggling with? Um, what are they seeing? What are the trends? And and because I'm an employer, I understand that side, but I also inside understand the the employee side or the physical therapist side. And um, I want to share some um, some tips for you guys and and what what that means for you and and what it is that you want to be able to do to accomplish this. So there's a couple of things happening. Um, you know, I, I think one of the things, the easiest things to understand that we all do is that reimbursement for insurance coverage is going to continue dropping. And I think for some coverages, I've I've read, I think in Medicare or other insurance is dropping if anywhere from three to three to seven percent. Um, and that's that's a huge gross margin um, for a lot of employers. And as a sports physical therapist, you're like, well, what does that mean for me? Well, if you're employed uh, by a by a company that uh, uses these uh, insurance policies, um, what that means is there's going to be a, a shift. I mean, there has to be as as we continue to to navigate this. Um, there's only a couple ways to to achieve the same amount of uh, results to keep doors open inside companies, um, and so you to get the same amount of revenue. Now there's three to seven percent drop. You have to see more patients, right? So then now that that puts you in a position where you have to see more people. Um, and so you, maybe you're treating two people an hour or, or three people or four people an hour. You, you might have to start stacking those people or double booking or all those other things. So as re reimbursement declines, that will be a reality. And um, that will be a thing. Um, so I, I think you have to be aware of that as a clinician. What does that mean for me? Yeah, you're going to have athletes, but you might have double bookings. You might have more things coming down the pipeline. Um, and, and that's not guaranteed. You know, there's a lot of business owners who um, they, you know, they, they were trying, they're staying true um, to what it is that they believe in and they want quality care. And um, I see those clinicians. And and if ever you, any one of you have employers who are outstanding humans and they fight um, and they take hits all year long and you might not see it on the, on the forefront, but what you do see is them trying to fight for quality care, right? They're trying to do what's best for the patient. They're trying to do, um, what's right. And that comes at a cost. And so as they navigate that, there will be times where they will have to, they will be unable to fight that and, and they'll have to have three or four people on the schedule. Um, it'll come to a point. I think that's a, a reality. Now that might happen in the next one to two, it might start to make that shift in the next three to five, um, for sure by 10, um, it'll be a, a tough challenge. Um, so reimbursements was one. So uh, if you own a practice, you're a sports PT, you own a practice, you're looking for tips on all these other things, uh, and you miss private practice section, that's definitely something to, to be aware of. Um, so that was number one. Um, number two, you know, I, I, um, I took a huge takeaway from this, you know, if you are, I am, um, if you um, are like me, you like being involved. Early in my career, I was into um, not the private practice section. I was into the sports section. I was into any special interest groups that I could get into. And because of that, um, I got involved into like the higher level of connecting with legislation and and being able to make a change or fighting for change and those type of things. And um, I do that less now, um, and I'll explain a little bit more later. Um, but ultimately, um, I want to make a direct impact uh, to the consumer. There's two different people that we're navigating as a physical therapist. So you're you're here right here in the middle. And you're either navigating towards legislation going up and creating new policies, fighting for insurance and reimbursements. So you're fighting up. Um, and then the other one is you're fighting down to the consumer. Um, you're fighting for uh, educating them on what it is that we do. And so there's two parties uh, involved. And and you, if you're in private practice or you are a st staff member, a team member at a local clinic, you're, you're working directly with the patient, right? You're like fighting at the ground level. We're all trying to get the consumer to understand what we do and how we can help them. And at the top level, you have legislation and, and policyholders and insurance policies. And how, you're, how does this relate to you as a sports PT? All right, this is a reality check. This is what I learned. And you need to take this with you um, and, and truly understand how this impacts um, your, your future. 
So, um, and, and this is no offense to any of the speakers. I, I think um, I, I was very engaged because I understand what they were trying to do. But the way they were speaking to me as a as a um, as an employer, uh, as a private practice owner, they were speaking um, legal physical therapy or policy physical therapy to a business owner. And so that might resonate with me a little bit, but they were speaking me speaking to me as if I was like in legislation. I, I, I was like, I, like I could understand them <laughs> and, um, I was so far removed. And so you as a PT, like you're treating patients, you do all that stuff. This stuff doesn't like, it doesn't get you. It doesn't, uh, it, it doesn't resonate with you. And um, this directly impacts you in your in your clinical profession because you're guilty of this too. So here, let me understand. Let me help you understand. So they were telling me about policies and all these other things that I can be doing better and and or sorry that are about to happen and what they're fighting for. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I understand we're trying to save a couple percent on a reimbursement. I understand we're trying to you know improve the the vision and, and future of our profession. We're fighting MDs. We're fighting people at the top level. I get that. I get that. And then there's, that's the top section, right? And on the bottom section, there's these like patients walking around the streets, having no idea what physical therapy is, yet the top section's fighting at the top, right? That that will take decades for that to come trickle all the way down to the consumer. So there's a long-term game and a short-term game. The long-term game is the people at the top. They're trying to make a change at legislation. Then there's the short-term change. Those are the people like you and me trying to make an impact locally now absolutely now so here's the problem when you're taught in physical therapy school you come out speaking and thinking like top level meaning uh yeah we are the pt profession that makes you helps you move and transform society and doing all those things though that wording is 100 for legislation and insurance and mds none of that jargon goes down to the consumer. It doesn't resonate with them and they don't understand it. So you are guilty of this because you've been trained in like legislation, legal and, and medical uh, um, terminology and jargon. And then if you're speaking to insurances and, and uh, legislators, that makes sense. But here's a problem. You use that same framework and terminology and jargon, and then you bring it down to the consumer. My point to this is that these people who are on this stage were speaking to me at the low level, at the community level, using insurance-based policy-driven jargon. It was hard for me to resonate. And I was like, this is what PTs do in the clinic. This is exactly what you guys do. You use the same same frame of reference that you're like, yeah, you, as if you were going to speak to an MD legislation or insurance, you're like, oh, the, the rotator cuff of the lateral external rotator, blah, 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 blah the upward winging, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, the freaking patient has no idea what the heck you're talking about. They're like, how does this help my life? And how are you conquering my fears? How are you helping me go to that next level? And, and here's the problem. Even if you, you finally solve that, you still have this problem. You need to know who your audience is. You need to know who you're speaking to. Because the funny, the fun fact is, if you're talking to a colleague, you're like, then that's medical jargon, insurance, and legislation-based policy, right? And then you have to switch your brain. And then you now have a patient. You then have to switch to like, hey, I'm a human. I use real terms and I speak like this and I'm not so robotic and I actually can have a planned conversation without having to think about what it is that I'm going to do with you and how many reps and, and the biomechanics about how I'm going to explain everything to you. So there's two different people here, two different modes on how to communicate with people. And I think you have to take that into consideration when you're working with, with people in that um, who are you talking? Who is the audience that you're talking to? And whether you're giving a presentation, you know that if you're giving a presentation to MDs, gosh, your presentation would be so much on data, it'd be on all this information. And if you bring it to the consumer, you use that same data, you use that same approach, and it just doesn't work. Why? Because it's a different audience, different intent. So um, let me share uh, an example. All right. 
So one of the conversations was, um, how do you you how do you go? So a lot of um, businesses, what we're trying to do now is is a lot of PTs are trying to do is um, go directly to employers, right? We're like trying to figure out, um, you know, how do I go to um, a local business and be able to help out instead of like you know having patients one by one? How how do I go to um, a local gym or a local um, you know, uh, factory and, and help out with, um, you know, posture and, and prevention and all the injury prevention and uh, decrease their workers comp claims and do all these other things. So you actually don't have injured people, you have healthy workers. And so it's a preventative approach, which is huge. That's great for our profession, like prevention, if you know me, prevention is is where I think a profession is going to be no matter what. So I'm in line with that. And so yes, there's uncertainty in the profession and I label this and under, you have to understand what you can control. All right. So if you know that reimbursements are dropping, you know that legislation and um, insurance is a long-term game, right? So those aren't things you can, unless you're at the forefront fighting that, those aren't things you need to be concerned about. And those aren't the words and the 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 language you should be using because those aren't the people you're talking to. So then where does your focus go? to the freaking consumer, the patient, and injury prevention. Yes, you can go to directly to employers. Yes, you can work with. I'm trying to help you understand. If you don't know what lies ahead in your career and you're like, what is possible, what is next? I want to show you that. I want to show you that there is a huge space in physical therapy and sports physical therapy that you can tap into that you don't even know about. So if you're questioning, I don't even like this profession anymore, I should be getting out. This is great news for you. If you're like, I love this profession, and I'm gonna continue doing it and doing the same things over and over again, it might be a little light bulb that there's going to be some trouble and, and some uh, storms that, that come ahead. So if you're in that you need to know what should I be aware of and what should I consider? Beautiful way to approach your professional career. So as you have direct to employers, right? So I'm going to go back to this. Direct to employers. So um, what we're trying to do is take this initiative to help local employers um, be more efficient, have less injuries. Oh, in the workspace, 100%. Love that. Perfect. Here's the problem. So um, we went through and um, we're going to go through all this data. People are trying to provide all this data on like work injury rate decreases and all these other things. Um, you know, like how, how do you, if you add physical therapy, here's what you need to be able to do. And here's the data that comes off of that. And I'm one for data. I love data, right? So do other physical therapists, so do insurance companies, so um, do uh, uh, MDs, right? We all love it. Here's the problem with other businesses, right? Um, I asked a, a colleague, I said, hey, um, you are you interested in in doing these uh, this data stuff and, and presenting? He goes, you know, what's interesting is we've presented data um, to patients. We've presented data to other employers on how we can help them. And just like they don't they don't pay attention to us. And I was like, can I offer you can we can we chat about that? And he said, yeah, I said, um, I think one of the things that happens just like consumers, just like you guys here in this podcast is that. Data is, data is important, right? Like if I show you, hey, um, this many uh, physical therapists now have um, this many good jobs from my um, academy, you're like, oh, that's important. That's, that's great. But it doesn't drive you to um, action to, to take that, right? There was a phrase that was at the course, and I love this. It was um, um, rational, logical decisions lead to conclusions emotions lead to action ready for this let's do it again rational rational logical decisions lead to conclusions or rag rational logical explanations data lead to conclusions emotion leads to action process that right so uh, how many times have you done things where you're like oh there's a data there's a data i should be doing this if i have if i have less calories i lose more weight that makes sense yeah uh if i study this much i pass the test yeah but nothing drives you to change none of that drives you to change you're like oh that's good information how many of you on, on different platforms, social media, you're like, oh, that's good information. Shit, that's awesome. Yeah, great. 
oh, great, great logical decision or great logical information. Now that great comes to a better conclusion in my head, but there's no action. The only way you create action is through emotion, right? So think about this. Everything that you do in your clinical practice is based on some form of data, right? But when you're trying to get others to make a change or make a, a decision, data is not what drives them to make that decision. Even yourself, emotion is what drives that. So my point to direct to consumer, direct to employer, is that, you know, uh, this colleague who said, you know, we provide all the data, they just don't seem to be interested. It's because you haven't created any form of emotion. Why don't you go in and build a relationship, shake their hand, show them what you can do, then provide the data and support it. They need to feel who you are to create that emotion of why your practice is so different and how they're going to help them. That emotion is what drives actions and people to shake hands and say, you know what, I'm going to take your company and do that. So, you know, being at this conference, I was like, we're speaking to two different people here, right? Like there's legislation, insurance, MDs, and then there's local businesses, local economy, and local consumers and local patients who are completely different, require two different types of voices. And the problem is you can't deliver to the bottom, which is the person you're serving, which is the local person. And that's where you're going to struggle. And so my point to this is no matter what you hear about uh, decreased reimbursements rates, decreased jobs, decreased this. So you're like, oh shit, now I got to get scared. No, 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 no. How about you focus on what you can control? The shit up top is going to take you decades. It's going to take you a long time to the trickle all the way down. How about you make the local change and you now, if you're going to work with people, take care of your patients, take care of them, communicate in a way that they can completely understand. Don't just provide data. If you're like, gosh, I, these, these running analysis, right? Like I, I love that people promote like, oh, running analysis, data to increase your speed by 40%. Sounds good. That still doesn't create emotion. You got to get in front of people. You got to get people to understand who you are. You got people to feel who you are. So I get this question often. How do I get more athletes on my schedule? Well, you're not going to do it with more data. I can promise you that. And what do we do as a profession? We love data. We just want to provide more data. Why? It doesn't create action. And that's why researchers are in a box because they're not. their job is to help draw conclusions, not to create action. So your job as a professional is to interpret that data and create action through emotion, through relationships, through experiences. That is your job. So don't expect just because you have data, you're going to have patients and athletes on your schedule. That's what you have to, to help to understand now with the uncertainty of PT. As we go on, it's going to be more critical. You're going to still be looking at, well, what's the app? What's the thing that's going to give me the best number to help my patient understand? Well, the problem is that data doesn't interpret itself. You show it to the patient. Imagine you shutting up and just show them the number and they're like, what does 22 kgs mean? I don't, what, what does all this mean? It's your job to interpret that. So if you can't create that emotion, you can't understand and help them feel better through the use of that data and explain it. And you have, you know, deer in the headlights look, they're like, well, I don't understand anything. Then you suck at communication. That's the problem. And if you are unable to do that, you will struggle. And I say this, some people will get offended at this message and good, and that's fine. You'll, you'll just continue to go in the spiral of listening to the same jargon that has filled our heads from PT school all the way through insurance, all the way through MDs, that'll just kind of be in this constant circle of decreasing reimbursements, blah, blah, blah. Whether you're in that market or not, whether you're cash base, whether you're insurance based, whether you work for somebody, where you whether you're in a sports performance clinic, whether you're anywhere, it doesn't matter. What you have to understand is what can you control, right? Out of all of that, you're like, that's great information, good data. <laughs> but what can I control now? What does that mean for me locally? I'm telling you as an employer, be aware of what's happening, but also for you, nothing changes except you have to understand who you're speaking to. You can't rely on insurance MDs to tell the patient exactly what you do. 
you have to show the patient what you do, not tell them or expect because you have a doctorate of physical therapy or masters of physical therapy or whatever credentials you have. That's all data that comes to conclusions, but doesn't lead to action. So because they know that they're like, so what does that mean for me? What are you going to do for me? Can you get me back to sport? Can you get me strong? Can you do all this? Why well, can? Well, then show me. Your job will continue to be the show me specialist. You will be an expert and show me. Why well, have a doctorate? Show me what that means. Why well, have my CS? CS, show me what that means. And I think that if you continue to be concerned what's going up above, you'll lose sight of what you can really control. And that's the relationships. That's the people that you serve. And if you don't continue showing them what, what you do for their health and their fitness and their longevity and their nutrition, their sleep, their, their entire health profile, you will have a difficult time sustaining and having longevity in the profession. You'll get burnt out because you're going to be stuck in the wheel of everything else. And if you can see the light a little more clear, you're like, all right, well, maybe I, I do love this profession. Maybe there's a chance for me. Great. Or if you didn't know it was possible, you're like, all right, now I know I, I got to spend more time figuring out how do I connect with my local patients? How do I have build a stronger relationship with them? So that no matter what happens at the top locally, by the time this trickles all the way down, you have, you've been working with so many patients that they love you. They'll never leave you. And that's literally what, what happens. And those are the most successful PTs. And so, um, why did I do this podcast? If you're uncertain about your future of PT, you feel lost, you don't know what's next or what's possible. Um, I, I think that you have to, um, you have to, uh, uh, you need to find somebody, a group, a community, a mentor um, to help you see this light. Because, um, you know, I, I love going to these conferences. I have another one next month. I've been, if you guys have been listening to this conference, you're like, when do you ever, when are you ever home? <laughs> I've been traveling a lot this year and I have probably one more big year of traveling. And um, the reason for that is I'm, I'm investing in myself um, much like I tell you guys to do, you know, you know, I, I tell you guys that, you know, because you have one or two CEUs allotted in your um, professional career, um, you, your professional development is a reflection of, of like your personal view of, of your personal perspective. So if you're not investing in your career path, I mean, that's probably, that's a reflection of you because if you are, that means you're not growing, right? Like you're growing at the rate at, at, that you invest in yourself. So if you're not taking courses, you're not doing those things, you're not spending that extra time, you're not taking those, those implementing those podcasts, you're not doing those things. It's very, very difficult. So um, just like I I uh, advocate to you guys, uh, I take, gosh, I've, I think I'm on my eighth course this year, <laughs> eighth course. Yeah. So um, I've already mapped out, I think 90% of 2024. I think I have eight or nine conferences, uh, not including additional CEUs and not my own, my own personal six CEUs that I'm, I'm doing next year. So, um, you know, I, I've got a lot on the plate, um, but I know I've, I've mapped that out already. And, and I'm, because of that, I don't have to worry about the riffraff or, or all the other stuff that continues to change that you continue to create your path, you continue to create, um, you know, that that fulfillment inside you that no matter what happens outside, like you still work with your patients, you still have that happiness, you still love what you do. And the only thing that changes your perspective, of what you do is outside stuff coming in, and it changes your viewpoint. Now, if you mix that with motivated patients who actually want to get better and get results, and you're laser focused on improving them at the local level, it's a beautiful harmony. And um, that to me is is why you work, right? That's why you chose this profession. And so I think a lot of people question, a lot of people feel lost. And and that's why I do these podcasts. I'm, I, I, I can promise you that what you're feeling is normal. And my job is to show you what's possible. And then secondly, what's the direction that I would put you on right now? This is the same, any, any of my team members, anybody that I mentor, um, this is the same conversation that I would tell them in that if you could understand that um, you have control over this and it's your role to have a direct relationship and communicate effectively with that patient at the local level, lo local businesses, um, it sets you up for success to be um, a local, like a sustainable uh, uh, physical therapist who enjoys what they do and 
you know, whether your employer is going through rough times or anything else, you you make yourself more marketable. Why? Because despite all the chains that's been going, like you're producing outcomes, you've got, you know, patients on the schedule, you've been able to maintain that like positive viewpoint, and you still know how you can impact this profession. And you know, what's funny, you'll find that local, um, that business owner, your employer come to you asking like, well, hey, what are you doing? What, how are you doing this? Like, what, what's changed? And I'll tell you what, it's just your view. And um, I've had it happen with several uh, physical therapists that I mentor. And um, it's it's not you're not looking for that. You're just looking to stay positive, stay laser focused. And what's funny is as you do this, uh, more people are just attracted to that. They're attracted to positivity. They're they're uh, attracted to results. They're attracted to people who make change. Um, and that's you, right? Like that's why you're on this podcast. So um, this is my addiction. This is my my thing. I love uh, I love change. I love growth. And so after coming uh, back from Austin, I wanted to share with you guys uh, inside um, what's happening with profession and, and what to, what it is that you can control. So I think my biggest thing I wanted to walk uh, have you guys walk away with is three things. Uh, number one is, um, you know, I want to explain the reimbursements, those are dropping, blah, blah, blah. Uh, direct to employer, uh, I get it. Uh, you also have to, uh, underneath all of that, who are you speaking to? Um, the top legislation, MD insurance, or the bottom patients, um, you know, businesses, local that you are there. It's a completely different language. Um, and my solution to that is one, I think you have to be aware of the uncertainty. Uh, you have to find a mentor to show you uh, so that you're confident throughout the whole process. And then ultimately develop this so you can have more skills um, to make yourself more marketable um, to employers, to patients, to all of the above. And um, that ultimately puts you in a good position and our, our profession is a good position because you are the ambassador locally. That's our patients don't know what's happening in legislation, not even on commercials or anything else. They just know well, my local physical therapist does it this way. So you're the local celebrity. You're the local ambassador. So whatever you do is what they perceive. And that's a lot of responsibility. I don't think you understand that. So um, if you're looking for a mentor, um, there's two places I'd have you start um, right now. At the time of this recording, it is in on November of 2023. Um, two places to start. I would have you go into my, uh, if you're just beginning with me, I'd take my Kickstarter uh, eight-week online mentorship program that starts January 10th. 2024. Uh, and you can find more information, drchrisgarcia.com forward slash Kickstarter. Um, and uh, if you're further along the way, you've been practicing three to five years, uh, and you're trying to figure out what's the next best step for you, you've gone through a couple jobs, you got a couple employers, you're tired of the profession, you don't know what's going on, you went through unmotivated employees, you're not fulfilled, and you're figure, trying to figure out what's next and what's possible, then I put you inside my uh, academy, uh, my Sports PT Academy, and this is where you get direction. Um, I won't do all the work for you. I'm here to direct you on the right path. So if you're looking more, you know, exercises and podcast on inspiration. That's not what I'm going to do here. I'm going to help you point you in the right direction. I'm going to give you responsibilities. That's your job to accomplish. And I'll hold you accountable. That's that's my best strength. Um, and that's what you lack the most. You can get all the ideas uh, that fade away until the next podcast comes out, or you go onto the next Instagram reel, or you go onto the next TikTok or YouTube video, and you get inspired and you have you go through all inspiration all year with no form of completion of anything. <laughs> and um, I've, I've seen it happen a thousand times, and I know exactly where you're at. So if you're three to five years out or more, and you're looking for direction, uh, my academy is a place for you. And you can find more information there, drchrisgarcia.com forward slash academy. Uh, in either case, uh, I hope you guys are doing amazing. Uh, and I will see you guys on the next episode. Take care.